Hello, everybody, and welcome to another show of Revit Pure Live. I am your host, Nicolas Gatelier, an architect, BIM specialist, and founder of the website RevitPure.com. Uh, Revit Pure Live is a show where we help you become a better Revit user. Uh, sometimes the show is all by myself, and sometimes I have guests, just like today. Uh, before going to our guest, a few things to talk about. Uh, first, the Revit Pure pamphlets. If you still haven't got your pamphlets, head over to revitpure.com slash pamphlets. The link should be in the description of the video. These are free PDF guides that I've started creating uh, since 2016. Uh, if you scroll down, you can see all the pamphlets I've created since. And the goal is always to find a complicated Revit topic and to try to explain it as simple as possible. So go over there and you will receive a link to get the whole collection and it's all free. Uh, I'm also trying something uh, different this week. I've created a page uh, at revitpure.com slash appointment. I'm not sure if it's in the link in the description. I I'll add it later. But if you want to talk to me for any reason, you want to talk about your uh, uh, Revit problems, have a question about your template, uh, anything really, I'll open a couple of of slots where you can uh, book a free appointment if you need some help with anything. I'm interested to talk to you. Uh, or some of the people actually booked to demonstrate a cool plugin they've made. Uh, so head over to repetpr.com slash appointment. The next show of Revit Pure Live will be next week, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. It will be with Andrea Lenny Wiss. I'm not sure how you pronounce the last name, Polish last name, but it will be about Formit. So recently we were uh, discussing about Formit and it seems that there were not that many users that were actually using the tool. Uh, Andrea told me that she was actually using it and she loves it and she thinks it's much better than SketchUp and is more compatible with Revit. So she'll be coming to the show to talk about it. it. Should be very interesting. All right. So don't miss the show next week. So today's guest is Dana De Filippi. Dana Dana graduated graduated from Virginia Tech studying interior design. She is based in the DC area since 2008. She has been working in the AEC industry and has developed her expertise as a BIM specialist. She has been the BIM manager at multiple firms before becoming an associate and BIM technologist at Smith Group in 2018. Dana also has her own YouTube channel at Dynamo BIM and is a co-host of the BIM Thoughts podcast. Welcome to the show, Dana. Thank you so much and thank you so much for having me. All right. Well, thanks for coming to the show. So uh, I think a couple of things uh, I always I uh, like to ask people in the chat where you're from. So the, the audience, let us know where uh, you're based. Always interesting to well, know. I not often does somebody pronounce my name correctly. It's very did I do rare, so correctly? You, I you did. You actually pronounce my name the wish the way I wish it were pronounced. Ah, the you know, Italian feel, way. <laughs> I, the Italian way, right? Like I'm sure uh -huh. in Italy it was something beautiful, like Di Felipe, and you know it was absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> but it just Dana De Filippi is very Americanized. Uh -huh. I'm sure they, you know, misspelled it at Ellis Island and the whole deal. <laughs> yeah, um, well, but... uh, I'm I'm French Canadian, so uh, there's similarities between Italian and French. So I, I guess I see it the the kind of a, you know, the the Latin way, the Latin pronunciation. So yeah, a lot look... of people, a lot of Spanish speaking people actually say Donna as well. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that you actually didn't say that because that's my aunt's name. Yeah. yeah <laughs> Dana. 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 Yeah. You got that. Dana. <laughs> like daytime. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, but my... I'm, I'm based out of the uh, D.C. area. I'm, mm -hmm. I was born in Virginia. I went to school in Virginia, um, moved to D.C. for six years and just recently relocated back to Virginia. So. I um, you know, love this area. I've traveled quite a bit. The last place that I actually traveled was to Barcelona was mm -hmm. in, in Amsterdam, actually, same trip. And it was it was amazing. It was February of twenty twenty. So before the whole lockdown and everything oh, just before occurred. That. I was I was super lucky to to make it out before then. So I'm really itching to get back on an airplane. 
<laughs> yeah, Barcelona is amazing, right? I've been oh there a goodness. while ago. Yeah, I, I can't so wait to go back. And that's rare, actually. Usually when I go to a place, I'm like, all right, done it, check. You know, it's mm -hmm. off the list. But I'm, I plan on going back to Barcelona for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, me too. I haven't been in Europe in a while now with the two young daughters. I will bring them eventually, but uh, at two years old, it, it's a little young, especially when there's two of them. So um, I think you got a little drink with you since it, it's the evening. I also I got my, my little beer. So this is... Uh, a Dame Blanche. Uh, I have a, a beer Prosecco. from Prosecco. So. <laughs> it's, it's sparkling Italian wine. sparkling wine with the Italian, Italian last sparkling name. Wine. You got it. <laughs> but Cava, I don't discriminate. You know, <laughs> any type of sparkling wine and I'll, I'll drink it. All right. Well, cheers. <laughs> and cheers, hello, I drink before you. Hello to the good people in the chat from uh, Santa Rosa, California, Argentina and uh, Quebec, Canada. Oh, so somebody close to me. Happy to have you guys. Yeah, cheers. All right, so when did you get started with uh, Dynamo? I got started in Dynamo, I guess about four or five years ago, based off of life safety calculations, actually. And so that's actually what I taught at AU. My, my course was, was on occupancy calculations, the smarter way, mm -hmm. and um, basically integrating Dynamo. So you don't have to export. It's all right there within Revit. I'm very, you know, intuitive, hopefully, and, and all of that integrating Dynamo player and, and the whole thing. Um, so you can definitely find that on the AU website. Very easy to find. Um, oh, is that so what you did where... uh, with Jeff? I think I saw part of that, the load occupancy. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. You got it. <laughs> yep, I presented that quite a few times. I, I presented it at AU, um, built uh, with Jeff. So. All right, and you got to something a little different for us today. So you've been using yeah. the Dynamo player for a, a while now, s since you started with Dynamo? I have. So where I really started, so going back to kind of, you know, where I learned Dynamo, and I really do have to give credit to Marcelo because a lot of his AU courses and stuff like that really made it possible for me to learn. Um, breaking down Dynamo in a, in a practical usage was, was so important to me to see it in that light and to see the, the real usage of it and, and why I should learn it. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, I was working with a very small firm in, in Washington, D.C., in Georgetown, really beautiful area. Um, and it, you know, was, you know, just basically for architectural usage. Um, so I was there for a year or so, and I actually migrated to Smith Group, which is multidisciplinary. So they do architecture, engineering, civil, landscape, structural, um, you know, MEP, all of the all of the different things. So, so it's so really it's not wonderful, actually. They're not BIM consultant. They're an actual practice no. firm. Mm -mm. Mm. Yep. Oh, interesting. So I used to those work days, everybody consultant. works for BIM consultants. I used to work at a consultant. So prior uh -huh. to actually learning Dynamo, so um, you know, many moons ago at this point, I worked at Microdesk um, as a consultant. It was a lot of travel, though. Mm -hmm. So I ended up um, taking a job at one of the places that I was consulting in Georgetown. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, finding my home base there. They were actually migrating from MicroStation to Revit. So everything was brand new. I got to, you know, create all the standards, all the templates, all the family. Oh, that's got to be fun, that. right? It, it was usually really you start, there's some sort of template and you've got to upgrade it. And if you modify it too much, the, the guy who created it originally gets uh, offended. <laughs> Absolutely. It's just regardless, it's a lot of stuff to clean up and go mm -hmm. through and go, starting from scratch was, was such a huge thing for me. So that was really, really nice. So, um, but, Michael... but Smith Group's been really great because, it, you know, I've been able to basically um, migrate into the more computational role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a uh, Michael Mc. Kelvy in the chat says uh, AU question mark. AU stands for Autodesk University, uh, which is, for those who don't know, a big convention in uh, a big conference in Vegas. Uh, I haven't been in a while in Vegas now that I think about it. Last time was 2017. Yeah, uh, now that I think about it, I, I kind of miss it. I wish it was a, a real, con real conference this year, real in person, but it's still virtual. 
Yeah, it's it's really sad. I, I really miss, you know, meeting people like you in person, mm-hmm. meeting people like you, know, you guys in the chat in person and, and talking about these types of things. So it's been really nice kind of migrating to the virtual side of things and still having a little bit of that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'll say at first I was happy to have a break, you know, of, uh, of traveling and I kind of did enjoy staying home, but I don't know why, maybe maybe it's with the spring and the beginning of summer, but I feel like going out of the house now. I'm ready for traveling again. Totally. <laughs> I can't wait. Where do you think this is the first place you'll go? <sighs> a great question. I don't know. But sky's the limit. You could go yeah. anywhere. Where would you go? Well, yeah, it depends if I consider the fact that I have my two daughters with me, which will probably eliminate some of the long distance flight. Uh, so ideally something without uh, jet lag to facilitate them. So probably somewhere on the East Coast of the US, lots of nice beach and it's uh, great with kids. Miami, maybe? Key West? Uh, you yeah. can do a lot of traveling yeah, there. Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Take the, take the kids to Disney uh, or you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. parks. That would be possible. Yeah, a lot of uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of Quebecers go to Florida actually, and but a, a couple of years ago Cancun. went to to South uh, Carolina. It uh, Hilton Head, South Hilton Carolina, Head just on the border beautiful. of Georgia. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember the name of the place, but we are. Uh, there's there's beautiful uh, beaches. Charleston, Savannah. It was really close to Savannah. Yeah, Hilton Head Beach. Just a little, yeah, probably so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes. It's a beautiful, absolutely beautiful. They have like wild horses mm-hmm. and Spanish moss hanging from the trees. It's really yes. Gorgeous. So that's that's with the kids. If I have to go to go alone or uh, you know you know with friends, uh, I would like to go to Japan someday. <laughs> Japan would be great. I think that's actually my. I I do not have children i have dogs Mm -hmm. if so i'm sorry (laughs) if you end up hearing them i have a five month old standard poodle and he (laughs) excuse me he likes to be a really scary dog so he if any noise is outside happening he's definitely gonna bark (laughs) so um but i i think i'm gonna move to asia i think not move that's the that's the next travel destination i mean yeah yeah. is um that's really the only continent that i haven't been to yeah me neither i haven't been there yeah, so many places. Anyway, so I think you got a little, uh, a few slides that you've created for just for uh, this did. lecture. Just a few, just a few slides. So I definitely let me, want this to be more interactive. Possibly. All right, let me switch to your screen. All right, so we can see your camera and we can see your slides. Awesome. So, yes, you guys can find me a few different ways. I know my last name is, is hard to spell. I wish that I, I said it the way Nick said it. I probably should migrate into saying it that way. <laughs> if I have children, I'll get them to say it that way. <laughs> um, it is, and you can find me on YouTube with my own uh, YouTube channel, Data Mobile. Um, so one of the things that we do at Smith Group is we try to utilize Dynamo Player for all of our Dynamo scripts that are certified. Right. We, we hope that you know, the Dynamo users can get into Dynamo, can create their own scripts, can do what they need to do. But for the mass population of Revit users, a lot of people are uncomfortable in Dynamo, which I completely understand. Right. Revit is hard enough to master. And now you're going to jump into this other program. Right. So by utilizing Dynamo Player, we essentially try to make it super intuitive. So essentially anybody can go in here that is a Revit user regardless of really what level of task you're performing. It could be something as basic as updating the drawn by initials uh, within the with this title block information, right, related to the sheet, which you can see here with this Dynamo Player script. Um, so one thing that we've definitely tried to do is incorporate what we refer to in Dynamo as outputs. So you can see there I've highlighted in red in that red box Essentially, Dynamo is telling you as the user what just got updated within your Revit model. And this as a user definitely cuts down on the kind of the the mystery, right? Sometimes people will run a Dynamo script and like, what just happened? I have no idea. I don't even know where to go check, right? And in this kind of situation, you, you know, okay, my sheet floor plan and my sheet sections just got updated, right? So you now know 
those, those are good to go. Of course, you could add additional outputs. Maybe you want to add a count of the number of sheets that got out, you know, updated. Maybe you have a really long list of sheets, etc. You know, you could also include additional filtering. You know, a lot of the time within our standard uh, company templates, right? We have a lot of different sorting parameters within our sheets, right? So we might have presentation sheets and construction documentation sheets. So maybe that's also an input here. So you can just update different sheets within your project browser based off of your project browser organization. So basically trying to understand when we certify a script, which essentially means that the masses will be able to use it we try to understand, you know, if I were an electrical engineer, how would I use this script? If I were a planner, how would I use this script? Entire tier designer, right? All across the board, how would I use this script? And then tying even further down into that idea, maybe what are some of the things that me as a user, as a rev user, sometimes it's hard now, right? Nick, I don't know about you, but I have kind of gotten out of Revit a little bit. So out of production in particular. So it's hard for me to know, like, okay, if I were updating sheets methodologically, you know, how do, how do I want to do this? Um, so, you know, it is, it is actually nice talking with the groups under, you know, going through the beta, doing those types of things so you can better understand um, what's going on and how the, the tool is actually being used. So the bigger issue, however, which if you guys create Dynamo scripts, you know, they're going to fail regardless of whether it's something that the user input that was inaccurate or maybe something that you as the Dynamo creator didn't consider. Yeah, like the yellow nodes value. and the red nodes. <laughs> oh yeah, yes, the yellow nodes, the red nodes. Even, even just the null value in the list that you weren't anticipating, right? Outside of just like the general management of uh, maintaining the packages and you know all of those different things. Or the, you know, gosh, in different versions of Dynamo, the inputs break, the yellow nodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love those as Dynamo creators for sure. Um, so you, those types of things are hard to anticipate. But when we can, what the best thing to do is to essentially let the user know that maybe it's something that you need to check before you call me, <laughs> right? Because Smith Group is huge. We have you know lots of people utilizing these scripts hopefully right if every time somebody runs a script and it breaks i'm going to be getting a lot of calls so if i can give the user a little bit of an idea as to why that script may have broken they can go back they can check that script right make sure that the inputs are actually accurate because you can see here they were probably really quickly typing that and not necessarily paying attention, right? I'm a quick typer, not necessarily, you know, maybe you're looking at your keyboard and you're not looking at the screen. And you go through there and we know there is no parameter with this case. And Dynamo, you know, Revit, the API, it's, it's very case sensitive. So you can see there, I output no elements updated. Check to ensure parameter slash parameter value exists as specified. Mm -hmm. case so, so these are little instructions that you give to the staff when the, the, the script breaks or if something doesn't work to uh, little instructions, basically, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. You got it. You got it. So, so now they're like, oh, okay, rather than calling them because it's going to say null otherwise right mm -hmm. and they're like what does null mean i have uh, i've yeah, never yeah. even heard of null I'm yeah i mean for <laughs> if you're doing some programming maybe it's obvious to you but most people in the ac industry have no idea what that means right absolutely i didn't know what it meant up until recently yeah, yeah so sure. i i completely get it um so essentially by doing these types of things then the user can simply say, oh, okay, I made a mistake. They can go back, they can type it the way they need to, type in you know, the information the way that it's supposed to be presented in a case sensitive way and it works, right? So it's cut down on, first off, they're not, they're not gonna need to call anybody. The script, they just need to change a few things, run it. They don't need to you know, maybe 
your company does help desk tickets. They don't need to email somebody. They don't need to send a chat. They, you know, the communication is just gone. It's eliminated. And now they can worry about going on to that next task, which is hopefully automated, <laughs> right? So with that being said, updating the elements hopefully isn't that hard for us Dynamo creators, right? We're essentially getting a category of elements, maybe cleaning it a little bit because sometimes we do get some null values, essentially getting the parameter value, asking what parameter value we want to filter by to get the find and replace piece of that. And then, um, you know, specif specifying the replacement value. So you can see here, I put all of my input values in pink. So anybody at Smith Group that wants to open up my scripts and start playing around with them, hopefully it's relatively easy to navigate. So these are input values that, that are used in the Dynamo players. You got so it. Not necessarily so, all inputs, right? Well, it could be all inputs because mm -hmm. sometimes I, I will put inputs maybe in a light pink um, if it's mm -hmm. just a Dynamo specific input and not necessarily intended to be a Dynamo player. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, maybe you know for a, a project specific change that might need to be edited, or maybe that's something that's causing issues in some projects. That might be something that needs to be manipulated. So that might be a light pink. Um, but by right clicking on a uh, node, you can make it an input. So essentially the majority of the nodes that are in a pink group do tie to these inputs. So you can see I have four inputs here within my Dynamo player interface. And here I have the four pink groups, which tie to those four inputs. And it's also really helpful for me if in, you know, 2023 mm -hmm. dynamo doesn't necessarily work the same way which is totally a possibility right i mm -hmm. can get into this you know a year later two years later and figure out very easily what's going on yeah sure i mean just today i was opening an old script uh that was made a few years ago and that didn't work with a new version and it, it was really hard to find what was going on i had to find a yellow node then I realized that the node got updated in the, an update of the package. So yeah, having a color code like that could at least help uh, Absolutely. organize. You can especially see that with I the also inputs. put the the actual groupings here in in the beginning of the node, so that you know when you open up the node, not only do you get a description and if the script requires any custom packages, etc., you also get a kind of an idea of what some of those groupings mean. So to, this is essentially to get the script to work, right? This is this would make the script work regardless, right? If you didn't have the secondary part of this, where you can see those those the kind of spaghetti pieces migrating off the screen, the script would still work. You would still just get the null value rather mm -hmm. than the error message that I populate, right? So or just an empty list. So essentially, with the kind of bulk of the reporting piece, essentially all I'm doing is I'm asking, are you null or are you empty? And in any case, whether you're null or you're empty, it's essentially just reading from a conditional statement, right? An if condition, it will feed this code block, which is essentially the the warning message that I wrote. And you can see here that really the, the doing the work here for me in terms of Dynamo player is this watch node, which two little caveats here, you must rename. And you can see that luckily in, in 2021 and 2022, they've actually told you that it's renamed. And in, um, you must right click and tell it to be an output. So if we go back just a few slides here, you'll see those updated elements here are reflected based off of that watch node within Dynamo. So the reporting, what I refer to as the reporting piece of this is almost just as many nodes as the actual editing of the per parameter value, right? To actually achieve the, the goal of that script. But 
it makes it so much more dynamic. Mm -hmm. So it's mo it's more work to set up, uh, but I, I I guess that it, it's the kind of reporting you can reuse easily between uh, one script to the other, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's scripts where, um, you know, if a view, if you go to update a view, you may not be able to update a view if it has a view template assigned to it, right? Because view templates gray out or they lock those parameter values in Revit. So you could throw that in your error message, especially for view specific update type of scripts, right? You could easily say there, you know, check this view to ensure that the view template isn't applied. And if the view template is applied, then update the view template and not the view. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So what happens in the Python script that I see there? The Python script, okay, very, very good question. This is actually something that drives me crazy <laughs> with Dynamo and it, one of the many, right? I must admit, if statements out of the box, if nodes don't handle empty lists. So you can see here where I'm asking it, if it's null, it works perfectly fine. But where I'm giving it an empty list, it's it breaks on me. Um, so it it really just unfortunately doesn't work very well with empty lists. So it's a very, very simple Python script. And I'll definitely share this with you guys today. Mm -hmm. um, I can either share it on my notion or, or however that, that would be easiest. Um, but definitely um, an easy Python script. You're not editing any Revit services or anything like that or having to make any Revit calls. So it's, you know, basic manipulation of data, essentially. It's just a conditional statement built into Python. That's yeah, it, it more robust, doesn't seem robust. to be uh, too complicated. So, so you got into coding. Yes. Did, did you I, learn the whole Python language or just no, just enough I'm, so you I'm could actually, use a few? No, few no, custom I'm going to tell you right now. I must thank Richard Schmidt. He's actually a very, very good friend of mine that I now work with. Mm -hmm. um, but he um, wrote this Python for me many moons ago because I realized very, very early in Dynamo that unfortunately there was a lot of limitations with the if out of the box node. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, however, with that being said, I'm very grateful for Esan, who yes. has um, been teaching me Python and Python tools for Revit, which I actually have a video stream for within my Dynamo BIM YouTube mm -hmm. channel. And I must say, I'm struggling a little bit. I still need a lot of assistance with Python. Mm -hmm. I'm, I usually try to edit more than create from scratch, but I do that even with Dynamo too, right? Like I yeah. grab pieces from here and there and... <laughs> yeah, it's not easy to learn programming language. It's really difficult. Just like learning mm -hmm. Spanish, right? Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, but when it works, when you finally get the thing you've been working on for a while to, to work, it's it's like magic. Yeah. It really makes you exactly. happy. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I see we have some people from Brazil. We have Argentina, Mexico. So, yeah, you, well, Someone Brazil, from you guys have, you guys don't speak Spanish. You speak uh, Portuguese. Mm -hmm. And in, in Barcelona and some parts of Spain, they speak Catalan. So mm -hmm. there's like, you know, <laughs> just depending on where you are, it's, you know, I would say coding is a lot like learning a language, right? <laughs> it's very difficult, especially later in life. I feel like the people who learn coding in high school or mm. now my nieces and nephews are learning coding in elementary school in Fisher really? Price toys. Wow, that's cool. You know, and like, it, it's really incredible. Um, so I think that makes it a lot easier to, to learn it at a much younger age. <laughs> Certainly so. So, um, you have, you're using the, the watch node to display, uh, either on the, the, let me switch back to your view. And I actually can open this up. Yeah. Okay. Dynamo. Dynamo. So I have the player open. Just the sample file. Nothing too too fancy here. Um, but 
Yes, essentially, um, the watch nodes are at this point the only output within the native Dynamo player interface. Uh, definitely love data shapes. Orchestra is amazing. Um, definitely, we'll have to share the link to that because that is a really, really wonderful um, package and add in. Uh, so, you can see here, once again, kind of the bulk of the, the script here that is actually updating the elements. And then over here, we have the actual reporting. And, and this actually is the watch node, right? Um, so you can see, luckily now in the newer versions of Dynamo, it actually says original node name, watch, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? It's so amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I honestly, I didn't didn't even know you could use uh, watch nodes in the Dynamo player. I've never talked yeah, about it. Yeah, so, so if I right click here, sorry for jumping around, guys. If I right click here, you can see that you can actually assign a watch node to his be an output. output. Oh, interesting. Is there other nodes you can assign to his output like this? No. It, it, you can maybe assign it to be an output, uh -huh. but it, it won't work. Yeah, and you can also, do anything. Um, and unless I'm wrong, I would love somebody to prove me wrong. Maybe in this new, newest version, which I am in 2022. So I'd love to be proved wrong in that. Um, but the um, watch node natively, like if you just actually bring in the watch node here and I don't rename it, but I make it an output, it still won't display as an output. Mm -hmm. You actually have to come in here and rename it in order for it to be an output Incredibly oh it, it has to be renamed hacks. to show up in the dynamo player it has to be renamed oh okay and you have to right click and tell it to be an output <laughs> so it's it's very specific steps so for those who don't who don't know are not familiar with the dynamo player could you show how to create to make an input into uh, oh, uh to absolutely. make it an input appear in the dynamo player Absolutely. So let's start with something really basic, actually. Right? What, what should we do? Okay. Let's do, let's do something, kind of, I don't know, something really basic. Like, I mean, I guess we could just basically recreate what we were doing. But mm -hmm. let's say that I want to, I don't know, just report wall lengths. All right. Why, Why not? not? Why not? Right? All right. So I'm going to actually do this so I hard code walls because we're always going to be giving walls. This is actually a tip that I gave in one of the presentations for your desk university um, on International Women's Day, actually. Um, if it's not going to be an input, hard code it. So I'm actually going to do a category by name. And then I'm going to get all the elements of the mm -hmm. category. So, so you're saying you should use the code block code block for whatever is not going to be used in the Dynamo player? Yep, or um, there's also, I, I really, really love the cat the drop down converter by Monocle. Mm -hmm. Love John Pearson, yeah. he's amazing. Um, the Monocle package is definitely one that you should have. It allows you to you know, align your Yeah, align too a lot. Yeah, I love that. If you've got OCD, you can align your, I your notes. I <laughs> totally do. Did you see the last script? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so now I have all of my walls here. Um, and so, yes, by doing this, you could also do the category node. Oh, not the permanent body duplicates, but the category drop down node and use the drop down converter and that would essentially code it to be category by name so that's also a nice little trick there which you can actually find on one of my dynamo chats with john pearson i yeah that's a new feature can you re-explain it again i think the drop what does oh, I the drop down I do? don't, I, yeah so let me let me just see if i can get it to work here so if i do the um categories and I select walls and I then come up here and I use the drop down converter. What it does is it essentially uses design code, design script to update that from being a drop down, which mm -hmm. 
the drop downs, the reason that we hard code it is because drop downs break across mm -hmm. different versions of Revit. Mm -hmm. So that's a nice little tip that especially if you have a bunch of scripts that you need to do this to and you have the drop downs, you can use this little tip here. Yeah. Okay. Because from one version to the other, the, Absolutely. the drop down menus get <laughs> changed or the scripts don't work and you have to update them. Absolutely. Oh, that's or cool. there's just a different amount of categories, right? Mm -hmm. Like in 2018, there wasn't a path of travel category, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. And there each category is a number, I guess our coded number that is invisible to most people. So yeah, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now we have all of our walls and we can just essentially get all of their lengths. So I'm going to do element dot get parameter value by name. And I'll get, I hope they're the parameter is called length. I don't see why it sh shouldn't be right. That should be like the basic parameter for walls. Okay, there we go. And we can do like maybe like a math round because those numbers are kind of crazy, right? We don't want to. There we go. All right, so essentially we want to output the lengths of our walls, right? Um, so what we can do is we can just grab an out a watch node. We can grab that there. So now it displays all those rounded lengths. And I can come in here and I can rename it. And I can sa say lengths. And I'll probably just go ahead and say rounded. Except, and then I'll right click and make it an output. And now that will be an output. Uh, in addition to that, one thing that we might want to do is report the walls themselves, right? Like what are the walls that are that length? Mm -hmm. Do you have the, the, the ID with, uh, so for those who don't know, the, the green part of the, uh, in the Dynamo script, you can click and it will show in Revit, right? You got it. So if I click, it actually will zoom too. Just like if you're in a schedule and it goes highlight and model. Mm -hmm. Same principle there, absolutely. Um, so would also be ben beneficial to, to output those. However, one thing that I've tried to do recently is rather than creating a separate watch node and displaying those in a separate watch and renaming that and making an output, I'll actually do a list.create combine those into two in those two lists into one list by do you know now they, there's walls mm -hmm. and there's lengths and I'll do a list dot transpose and essentially what that does is it grabs the index of the item from each list mm -hmm and groups it together. Yeah, they'll right? be combined. So you know the, the length is associated with uh, the wall ID and then you can you got it. You can click it and, and see. And the green uh, the green number that you can click, it also appears in the Dynamo player, right? It sure does. So now I have much more robust information that I'm providing to my user, right? Especially if I weren't providing any at all. So I'm going to save this other file, save as, save this into the same place that I've been saving these guys. I guess this would be walls. I tried to think about what is it that I'm updating? That's going to be the first name because unfortunately Autodesk, Autodesk, give me some folders in Dynamo Player. Mm -hmm. Right? It's crazy. Like, uh, there's no organization at all. And they're outside of just nomenclature. So what am I updating? I'm updating walls. And then I can say their lengths. Save that. Notice there's no inputs here. Right? All I have is this output of the walls and the lengths that of, you know, the rounded lengths, I suppose. So I'll go ahead and close this. And I'll go back to my Dynamo player 
go back and refresh and you can see here now we have our walls and lengths one thing i always recommend to my dynamo player users whenever you're using a script always get into the custom idea of just clicking edit inputs and this way you just know are there inputs for me to edit with this script maybe i can customize it for the best of my need yeah it's never a good idea to click play without no, uh, checking the inputs that. right Right? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. That's like a nightmare. <laughs> like if I see a user do that, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm just going there and start playing. I need to like disable Dynamo over your computer. Um, no, once again, this does not have any inputs, but it is going to display an output. So I'm just going to simply hit play. And once again, you can see here the wall and the associated link. Oh, that's cool. Oh, the, the text is blue now. The text is blue. Why? Yeah. Why did they change it? And I don't actually think it's clickable. Oh, uh, it's not but clickable. You could do the selection by ID, mm -hmm. right? And at least this can stay open. So you could be like one four four eight three seven, and now I have that wall. And let's let's double check the length: thirty eight hundred, mm -hmm. eighty three hundred. Yeah, thirty eight hundred. Which one did I pick? I don't even know. Looking for. Oh, okay, so so it's not clickable. But for for those who don't know, I know a lot of Revit users are not might not be aware of that. But uh, there are a lot more parameters, hidden parameters for each element, and including an element ID. Uh, this is not the the element mark. This is a unique number that is invisible, except if you use this this tool is where is it manage inquiry. Or if you're using yep, Dynamo, it's a unique where number for elements. Are, where mm -hmm. the warnings are. Yep, yeah. that's essentially how Revit tracks elements. Um, you know, so if, if you were to delete it and recreate it, it would actually get a new element ID. Um, really hoping that my list didn't get jumbled here. So let's look at this wall, which is the top wall. And there we go, 8377. It rounded up. So you can see here, we get the 8378. Yeah, and of interesting. Course you can do all kinds of. Maybe you only want to report the walls that have a you know length shorter than a foot. Yeah, so you yeah. Can go back and coordinate those. You know, we can make sense of these types of things. Yeah, <laughs> we would actually. Use yeah, it. that's a great way to do it. Do you, Do you know about the the model checker? There's a plugin called the model checker, but it's it basically can do stuff like that, but the user interface is pretty terrible. <laughs> It's useful for a few I, things. I have not played with it, the model checker now. It, yeah, it's it's made by Autodesk. Uh, there's actually a feature I like is uh, to check the model health. So it's it will tell you how many groups there are, how many uh, imported CAD instead of link CAD, oh, all that, that kind is of stuff. Really nice. But there's also a feature like that where you could look for uh, elements with specific dimensions. But the, the user interface is quite terrible, so it's much better to use Dynamo instead. Absolutely, or ID8. I love ID8 Explorer as well. Mm -hmm. ID8 Explorer, yeah, yeah I, Explorer. I've used them for their uh, warning tool. I think they have yes. uh, an enhanced uh, warning menu where uh, warnings are categorized by a priority, which is pretty helpful. Yes, yeah, it's pretty great. And it, you know, di additionally has some filtering things. So maybe if you wanted to filter the wall based off their length or different things like that, you could probably do that. So I, I think I'll, I'll glance at the chat. Here's Christopher who says, hello, Dana from Ghana. Look so at, I think, I I think we've got... representation you get. You get India, Ghana, <laughs> yes. Mexico. People Quebec, all around the globe from Quebec, all the China, continents. China, California, Michigan. We got Michael from Michigan. Huntington yeah. Beach, California. Yeah, that's what I always like to ask the question because I'm always amazed by. <laughs> uh, that's really. There's great. people all around the world. Yeah. Um, I would love to hear some questions, guys, that are watching. Yeah. So if you, you have any trouble using Dynamo or uh, the Dynamo player, go ahead with questions, please. And, yeah. Yeah. Earlier, you, Revit you were mentioning uh, Asan. So uh, for us, Isan is, is a legend in the community, but he's the creator of the great PyRivet plugin, which is a free plugin uh, that contains uh, so many amazing uh, features, including the 
legendary pattern maker, which is uh, extremely convenient. And also it allows you to create your own uh, Python scripts and embed them in the ribbon. So make sure to check PyRivet. I have a few posts about it. And uh, Dana, I think you have a few chats on your channel uh, with Asan, right? Absolutely. Yeah, Asan has actually become one of my very, very good friends. And mm -hmm. he, I just posted your link in the chat to the 10 amazing PyRivet features to save insane amounts of time because yeah, PyRevit is pretty incredible in that. Um, and, and Asan, just like a lot of us, um, you know, he was in production. He um, basically had problems in Revit, like we all do, mm -hmm. right? And he started creating these, these Python tools for Revit. And so mm -hmm. within the Dynamo chats, I basically have been you know, kind of getting a little bit of glimpse inside of his head in terms of how he created some of those things. Yeah, it's, it's so helpful. It's so amazing that it's free as well. It's, it's I mean, incredible. What a gift He's to like the community. A, such a superhero. Of yeah, a human. he is. He is. Uh, I, I do have a question for you uh, about uh, data shapes. So what are your thoughts of uh, using the, uh, the data shape uh, package, create a uh, user interface, uh, little menus with for your scripts uh, versus using the Dynamo player? Very, very good question. Now, I love Mustafa LIUV. Mm -hmm. And I want to throw that out right now. I think Mustafa is incredible. I think the work he does for our industry and how much he posts to the forums. And I actually had a chat with him on my channel very, very recently. Um, I think that he's just incredible. With that being said, I do not use data shapes. And the reason that is, is because once again, we as Revit users, we as architects, designers, engineers, et cetera, um, you know, even further down the line, construction, you know, all, all these people that are now utilizing Dynamo, which is so awesome. But we want to make it easy for them. We want to make it intuitive. And Data Shapes 100% does that. I do not want to cut on that. I think that Data Shapes has some really amazing things. You can, you know, add additional inputs that aren't typically inputs. You can add cool GIFs. You can, you can, you know, do some really good pre-processing of data to work into, you know, kind of the the idea of pass through or in transaction type of things that are really beautiful. However. I really like to get my users into the idea of using Dynamo Player Native. Because mm -hmm. the more that you throw at them, the, the, the less that this script looked than, as than the last, you start to break down, right? It's like, okay, this script is not unlike the script that I ran last week, <laughs> right? I can mm -hmm. understand what's going on here, you know, the, it, the consistency makes it intuitive, right? After running a few Dynamo player scripts that kind of are along the same vein of setup, you really start to feel like it's easy. You know what to expect. You you know, you, those types of things become much more intuitive. Yeah, do, uh, I mean, just so people understand what we're talking about, do you have an image close to you or a script that is using data shapes so people can see uh, what... Uh... I. I think I do. I think I do. I think I can get one. Give me one second. I have to find that hidden Dynamo location, but I have a favorite over here. I hate this box in Dynamo too. Like, why don't you give me like the regular favorites bar and like everything like that? Okay. So there is, let's run this one. Yeah, I think this one. <laughs> okay, so Data Shapes is a, is a package for Dynamo, and basically you can create the user interface. I was actually created my my first script using Data Shapes uh, in the last few weeks, so oh, no, it's it still work. kind of new to me. Let's do this one. Um, so yes, yeah, something I'm actually not against. I am 100% mm -hmm. pro Data Shapes, but I'm also in the same vein that. I can't get this to work and I apologize. Um, so no, 
<laughs> but check out um, Data Shapes has amazing resources available. He's always on the forums. Definitely some wonderful things. But it essentially allows you to to have additional pop ups mm-hmm. to Dynamo. So think about you know when you're in Revit and you go and you click on I don't know like materials, right? And then a pop up comes up. Think yeah. about if you were if you were to run your Dynamo script and the pop up came up and said, "Okay, what do you want to do?" and it allowed you mm-hmm. just more functionality about things that you could pick and yeah, it's a pop up like where that. you can add your your logo and you can customize the, the size uh, of the window. Uh, it, it can be quite a setup though if it's the imports are not too complicated. It, it, yes. it isn't too hard. Well, maybe I'm not. I'm not a Dynamo expert. I'm still kind of I, I, beginner I'm to just, intermediate level. I'm a conformist in mm-hmm. the sense that if, if you're going to go one way, mm-hmm. then go yeah, that sure. way fully. Sure, yeah. If you're not, then don't. I, you know, I, I just, for the sake of the user, <laughs> right? I want mm-hmm. these things to be usable. I want them to save time. And I don't want my users to be fearful of running them. Yeah, well, it's consistency. And it's probably easier to... Uh, to add scripts using the Dynamo players, then it would be to uh, add a data shape interface to multiple scripts. It would take a uh, longer time and maybe a little more work to make them more consistent. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I hear you. A few other things that I, and you know, just kind of going back to Dynamo and, and kind of winging the live demo here, which was always fun, right? Um, a few other things that we can do to, to make our Dynamo player inputs a little bit more robust, because that's one thing that data shapes really does is it makes inputs much more robust where sometimes Dynamo player is incredibly limited. Um, you know, so doing, for example, multi-selection in Dynamo player, almost impossible, right? Um, you know, uh, 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 options from a list mm-hmm. is, is almost impossible. With is it the, 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 the stop start option also that is not really possible with the Dynamo player? No, you can you can still end transaction. Okay. And it will still work within Dynamo player. That, mm-hmm. that will work. Um, so one thing that I try to do is use the Boolean when I mm-hmm. have two options, mm-hmm. right? So do you want it to be true or do you want it to be false? So a lot of the time we can associate this within Revit uh, with a checkbox, right? Um, So for example, um, sun path or crop view, those are checkboxes that are a Boolean. It's a a yes or no Mm -hmm. value. It's Mm -hmm. zero or one, right? It's binary, if you will. Um, So with that, we can say, do you want to crop all your views? Right, let's do that. Let's just go ahead and throw that within Dynamo Player. Um, it's a little bit more complicated because views also, and I'm, just for the sake of time, I'm just going to go ahead and use the, the category drop down um, for and grab one view uh, rather than every single view, just for the, the sake of demonstration. Um, one thing to note also is scope boxes will gray out your scope box. So if you have a scope box associated, the, the crop view will automatically be checked, right? So that's not something that you can actually manipulate. You would actually need to turn off the crop scope box to uncrop your view. All these little weird things that we need to think about when it comes to updating the API and just Revit and its little little funny things. So if I want to do an element dot set parameter value by name, right? We can say I want to set the crop. Is it crop view? We'll double check that, and then you can essentially say zero or one. Yes or no, true or false. Do you want to crop it or don't you want to crop it? Right. Oh, I was right. Crop view. Okay. So if I do false, it doesn't. If I do true, it's thinking about it and it crops it. Right. So I can say crop view. 
Now, one problem, however, is you can't hit enter. You can't do a line break within the title what of you a mean, node. Oh, okay. So the, the line in the Dynamo player, it's a single It's a single, single line. line. Mm -hmm. So, little trick. If you do crop view, true for crop, false for no crop. Now that it's in the title, I'll make this a little bit smaller so that it reads a little bit better here. We can actually copy this into the title. I have no idea why this works, but you can copy a line break. Really? Yeah. So now I can make this an input, save this to my location here, maybe even make the view an input too, so that people can basically specify what view they want to crop. All right, love to name these so they're a little bit more intuitive within Dynamo Player. Is input, is input. Save this in our same good old location, not edit, but save. And what, what are we going to call this? We're going to call this view update crop, right? So I'm always thinking about what are you updating? That's the first word. And that way in my Dynamo player, I get all the scripts that update my views. All yeah, the and it will show on multiple that... lines. The input will show multiple lines because of that little copy and paste trick. <laughs> That's so funny. Exactly. It's, it's such a little quirk that you can exploit. It's so silly. <laughs> All right. So now I have my view update crop. We're going to always remember to click on the edit inputs. And we should see our two inputs in here. Now I should have, of course, added an output. But this is a little bit more self-explanatory, right? Because it updates one view. And I can say, don't crop. And that should update the crop. Crop. <laughs> Taste the crop. Right, and of course, I could update the view. Maybe I want to do O2 floor. Now, do you see how I see multiple views the same name? Yep, yep. Do you know why this says? Um, yeah, not, not sure, actually. Is it the title on sheet or something like that? It's because, unfortunately, across different oh, because view of types, mm. across different view types, so floor plans and ceiling plans and area plans, they might have the exact same name. It's tricky. Silly, silly rabbit, right? <laughs> but um, it does typically show in the order of um, element ID, which is tied to the when it was created. So let's see if, if that's actually true. There we go. So O2 floor switched my view and that, that still works. It still gives me a, a crop and an uncrop. And of course I could, um, sh you know, toggle this so that it maybe it shows the crop region or, or what have you. Hey, Joseph, can you specify the order of edit input parameters in Dynamo? Yeah, That's I, I really just saw that. That's a great question. Mm -hmm. So it, you probably want the view to be first in your inputs, right? Now, probably, I, would yeah. love, I would love somebody to tell me this isn't what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> See, it sounds complicated. It sounds very uh, like a rivet step. Tell me. So, so once I get everything figured out and everything that I want, the first one that was created is going to be yeah. the first one that was shown down. Yeah, there, that's, okay? that's what I thought it would be something like that. So I'm going to leave the view one because I want that to be shown up first. And then I'm just going to copy. So let me copy the Boolean and then get rid of the original one. And now this was created after that one. So now if I save and get out of this and reload, 
and dynamo player, my inputs will flip because the technically the view drop down is created first. It used to be that you could get into the XML and change this relatively quickly from right here, but not anymore. But once again, so I would delete, love to hear copy, delete, and paste, right? And then switch your inputs so that mm -hmm. they tie back to you know. I would love to hear if if somebody has a, de a better way of doing that, an automated way, right? <laughs> I guess we'll have to ask uh, John Pearson to uh, create uh, a Dynamo Player Plus or something like that <laughs> that fixes all these actually, little dumb glitches. I wanted to reach out to John Pearson and Mustafa today to see if somebody could create me a run with elevator music option. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah, yeah. Like if and you could like choose the song that played, maybe like for every script it was different, but like played some sort of audio file in addition to running the script. <laughs> yeah, because, so yeah, GIFs are quite popular in the community. But, yeah, what about audio? What about audio? Mm. I, wanted, I want, like, elevator music. Like, I want some, like, cool Kenny G or something like that playing <laughs> and when somebody runs my dinosaur. Especially for the ones that take a while. Yeah. You know, you're <laughs> so updating you, you 400 patient. sheets. It might take a minute. Let me let me play you some Kenny G. Calm me down. <laughs> yeah, and you can have a public announcement like your your time is important to us. We are currently <laughs> processing your script. For every minute your script runs, you have saved an hour. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's really cool. And you're welcome, Joseph. Thank you for the question. All right, so do I have other question for you? Let me switch the view. While I th I'm thinking about it, I'll take a few sips. So are you still, do you have a little bit of time to drink your Prosecco at least? Yeah, of course. Always time to drink Prosecco. <laughs> and we also got uh, Christopher who says it's actually uh, 2050 AM here, but I cannot miss this session. Thanks, Christopher. I hope you get to use the Dynamo player. Wow, in Ghana, it's 1 a.m. It's very late. Thank you, Christopher. Do you use Dynamo player? I'd love to hear in chat. Do you use Dynamo? <laughs> and to um, selecting elements. Do you have a lot of script uh, that does that? Do you have uh, tips to help people select the right elements? Select elements how? Like if well, I, I guess to usually you way? quick select and then you have to do a kind of a cross selection. And you would use a Boolean mask to remove the categories you don't use, right? Yes. 100 percent of mm -hmm. course so very good question let me think if i have one that does that automatically after that <laughs> while we're thinking about it and um, uh, but actually recently i've also been using some of the the nodes from john pearson again from the mm -hmm. was was his package again uh rhythm yeah rhythm yep rhythm uh, is amazing. one that he does a few packages is that yeah he has one answer, that filters <laughs> He has an amazing, he has a bunch of really wonderful packages. And yeah, one is actually filtering because with Boolean mask, you have to create an equal node and then you have to create. Uh, like the element dot yeah, get category. Yeah, exactly. Equals. You have a few nodes to take and you've yeah, created so a node one. that filter by category, which is pretty cool and saves a few nodes, makes the scripts a little lighter. I think it doesn't work with you know, every type of filtering you need to do, but it uh, for a lot of them, it's a great solution. Let's see if I can get to it relatively quickly here. But yes, that's a very, very common issue, especially when you have the selection option um, within Dynamo player. Um, you, know, you don't want to have to make your user 
isolate the elements or get into like some crazy mode of like how to actually select them. Also, the selection isn't super intuitive. So the easier that we can make this, mm -hmm. the better, right? So you can see here, this, this particular script will actually align tags to other tags, right? So if you wanted to align your room tags to each other on the X axis or Y axis or whatever it is, so essentially this allows you to select a tag and then select a bunch of tags to align to that tag. So you select the tag, select element to align to, and then it gets that category and filters down the elements that you've selected for alignment to the same category of the original selection of what you're actually aligning to. So that is a very, very common thing that we do to make these selection nodes, whether it, especially with the multi-selection, um, it makes it much, much easier for your users. And that's really what it comes down to. If I feel like when, when you teach something in particular, or when you make something that you have to go through like five steps to explain, like, okay, well, first, to even use this note, you're going to need to isolate the elements. So select mm -hmm. the elements and then go down here and isolate them. You lost them at step one. They're already confused because they're using Dynamo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. So the more that we can make it a little bit more intuitive in terms of, you know, just, just select a bunch of stuff, including the tags that you want, and Dynamo will do the rest. Right? Um, so that's, and I'm using a tiny bit of design script here, not, not too much, but everything, you know, is right out of the box. Mm -hmm. There's also something, especially with working with Asan and some of these Python tools for Revit, I've tried to cut down on the amount of dependencies that my, my scripts require in terms of the, the, the custom packages. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because of the updates. Or be, yeah, because the, all the users because need the to download updates, the packages. Yeah, I see. Okay. Because of because of ma maintaining them. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, yeah. The good way the point. API changes, and then you know. Yeah, also, it, because we, if uh, if a, a package was created five years ago and wasn't updated, there's a chance a few of the nodes won't work anymore, right? Mm-hmm. Not only that, um, you know, hopefully. You know, especially if you're at a large firm that you guys have ways of utilizing the same scripts packages and that's all pretty easy for you as a user luckily at smith group we have that orchestra is amazing for this definitely check orchestra out um specifically for it yeah it's orchestra with a k and i'm actually for our users i'll throw it in our chat because it is and i actually had a chat with him um, recently about orchestra and how it makes sharing your scripts a little bit easier, easier, um, to share packages, to share scripts, and then also to sh share documentation related to your scripts, to get logging data related to your scripts, all kinds of really, really wonderful stuff. Um, within Smith group, we're really lucky because we have, um, a development group that essentially creates a lot of things for us. So they create an application that copies mm -hmm. a lot of our data for Dynamo down to our C drive. Mm -hmm. So those default folders that Dynamo looks at just get populated. Yeah, that was one of the questions from uh, that a one best practice. How do you share the player script files to your organization? Very, very good question today. Um, so that is exactly it. We mm -hmm. have um, a system that basically copies down from SharePoint, actually, down to the C drive of everybody's machine. This becomes an implication on our um, VDAs for our central, our, our, our federal and our secure projects that aren't, you know, they're getting wiped every day. They, you know, don't get necessarily the same mm -hmm. updates and stuff like that. 
And then, of course, if we wanted to share this with an outside consultant that maybe is, you know, working on the project that we want them to be able to work with the sheets in the same way, what have you, um, it just makes it really difficult. And Autodesk doesn't make it any easier, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, But Orchestra shared the link in the chat makes it yeah. really wonderful. So if you do I'll not have, have that for sure. I'm super lucky um, to have a development team and some really amazing people at Smith Group. Um, but if you don't have that type of infrastructure at your firm, look into orchestra, look into those, those types of tools that make even, dy- I mean, you don't even actually use Dynamo Player, it's a completely separate interface um, and allows a lot of the information to be logged together so that, you know, with your script, you have the resources related to that script and, you know, you can mine for, you know, all the users that are running it. It's cloud-based, you know, so really, really wonderful program. Yeah. I'll have a look at that. So I do have a, a final question for you and then I'll think the, the show will come to an end. Um, you mentioned that you had problems with, uh, the default if node in in python so i would be curious to hear more about it especially i think i've heard somebody mention a custom node uh, a node from a package an if node from a custom package that solve a few of the issues yes and i'm i'm sure there is i think there's like an if plus node yeah i if i remember correctly i think i saw that from uh gavin crump the acbm guru Yes, it was there, the, the, I'm sure there's a bunch of them because I'm sure I'm mm-hmm. not the only person <laughs> that has had this Bec- issue. Yeah, because yeah, what did, what did, can you resume the issue? I think I've I faced that issue recently too. Um, yeah, let's let's actually replicate it. So let me get back to the elements instant parameter find and replace, and and rather than using my Python, let's just use the standard if input to input to input to output. All right, and we'll just, for the sake of cleanliness here, get rid of this and move this up because the, the OCD is serious. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, so first off, in order to get this as an empty list, I need to um, basically get this to fail, right? So I'm going to come over here and do something weird like remove drawn by, just remove the by from it and see what happens. So if I come over here now, do you see how I get empty list Mm -hmm. regardless of whether it's true or whether it's false? This list is true therefore it should give me this warning message Mm -hmm. but it doesn't (laughs) and that's just like literally it fails with empty lit that's the best explanation i have and if anybody else has found a reason in terms of why this so yeah this node just doesn't work basically it doesn't work so now i remember i think it's from the zebra package there's a okay and if but this if, the, the, uh, if I undo a few times. Yeah, the, but else you can use Python, a little script. Yeah, by, with Python. The, the Python is very, very basic, not doing anything in terms of the, mm-hmm. um, you know, Revit services or Revit calls or anything like that. It's basically just a conditional statement and a loop. So yeah, yeah. I can actually get yeah, it. Yeah, and, and like you said, if you can avoid Super using easy. packages, it, it, may, it might be good. Exactly. So... Yeah, that's I don't even simple. think that this is necessary, this import here. That's pretty simple. <laughs> yeah, very simple. I think even I could get mm-hmm. this somewhat written on my own. <laughs> very little <laughs> help, if any. Um, so, but there's been a lot of conversation that I've had about this idea in general. And um, I've had a few different conversations with a few different people in terms of like, how do I do this? Do I do this with design script? Do I do this with Python? Is mm-hmm. there, do I do it with a custom node? Do I figure out a, a, a different way in terms of, you know, how I do it with, um, I don't know, the out of the box somehow, maybe I get that to work. 
So I've actually come up, this, this script is called If. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I've actually come up with a few different um, design script ideas. This is the out of the box, the Python. So really testing the best idea in terms of what's the best, because maybe design script as a non-Python user is easier to read. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I've definitely played with this idea because that drives me crazy that if not working with empty list is definitely a limitation that I find quite a bit. Yeah, why, why isn't so working? That's I usually strange. will default to using the Python to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems pretty simple. Yeah. All right. So that was my f uh, final question. So do you have any shout outs or things uh, users should look up to? Anyone you want to say hello to? <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely given a lot of shout outs already, yeah, yeah. so I'll, I won't do any more. But I, I will say, um, check out the forums. If you guys mm -hmm. have a problem, you know, especially if you've gotten into Dynamo, you've tried to figure it out, you're having a hard time, post to the forums. I post to the forums and people respond. It's, it's a really, really wonderful industry. We're really lucky to be in it. People are super smart. They want to help. Um, so in just googling <laughs> googling dynamo plus whatever your issue is yeah now really, that you mention it I, I really pose on the forums because i guess i'm too impatient like i look for an answer if i don't find it i keep digging and else i just, <laughs> I just go away but I, I should ask questions on the forum it's people. usually i will say if it's like something i need tomorrow i'm gonna mm -hmm. make a few phone call phone calls right yeah, yeah, but if sure. it's like this is really low priority yeah, Maybe it's not urgent. It's fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. then forums are awesome for that. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, where can people find you? Well, I am on Dynamo Bim, so you can definitely find me there. Um, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on LinkedIn. Dana Philippi one L two P's, and um, that's pretty much it. I, I I help out a lot with your desk university. I I'm. Um, I'm on BIM Thoughts on the podcast. Yeah, BIM, BIM Thoughts. So uh, how frequently do you post podcasts? Is, this, is it uh, weekly? It's weekly. Every Tuesday, we mm -hmm. get a, a BIM Thoughts Tuesday. So it's a podcast. Very rarely we do a vodcast, which is a video podcast. Mm -hmm. um, but Vodcast. Um, and yeah. I also... <laughs> Sounds I like also, a drink. <laughs> I, know, I also do um, the BIM XT Network, which is the East Coast of the United States. We come together and do a Revit presentation every month. So, and I moderate that. So you can find me in a lot of places and I post a lot on Twitter and LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I post weekly on my, on my YouTube channel. So a lot of traffic coming out. <laughs> all right, so I'll make sure to add all the links in the video description, but yeah, you're not too hard to find. Only David uh, to Philippi, that uh, is. Last question from Michael. <laughs> Michael McKelvey asks, what forum? So is it, it's Ooh. the Dynamo BIM forum, right? The Dynamo BIM forum. I will share that in the, the chat here. Very, very wonderful forum. Uh, yeah, they're, they're quite useful. I've, I've found a few answers on the forum. Really great sure. in getting responses on there, for sure. Uh, all right, Dana. Well, that... Thank that you was so really much helpful. For me. I've really learned a lot. It. And so let me switch to this. So next week I'll I'll be with Andrew Lenny Witz. Again, I'm I hope I'm the, I'm not mispronouncing your name, but we'll be talking about format. Uh, so if you're a SketchUp user, but you found the transition from Revit uh, to SketchUp uh, quite difficult to manage. Make sure to have a look at this session. So a big thank you to everybody in the chat and a big thank you to Dana. So bye Dana and bye. see you next week. Bye. <laughs>